Good morning, everyone. You awake? The dinner last night was amazing. Yes. Um, well, thank you so much to Hele for having me here. My name is Rachel Gogel. Thanks for pronouncing my name correctly. You're the best. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm here to talk to you about why I think that good people leaders and managers matter more now than ever before, especially in the design industry. So let's get started. So I first want to actually kick off um, by aligning on some terms. You may know from experience that the words management and leadership are often used interchangeably. Yes? I don't know. Do, do people resonate with that? So while there's some overlap between the work that managers and leaders do, there's actually also some significant differences. And I'm not here to go deep on the, these nuances necessarily, but I did want to kick us off with some clear kind of definitions since I'll be using those terms throughout my talk. So the key takeaway is that I want you to understand that management is a role, right? So being called a manager is like being called a school teacher, a librarian, a heart surgeon. It's a role, right? But leadership, on the other hand, is actually how you choose to show up. Leadership is the particular skill of being able to guide and influence other people. It's multidimensional, it's actually a creative practice, and leadership skills can be developed at actually any stage in your career. Regardless of your title or level, experience or degree, we, everyone in this room, is a leader. And to be a great manager, one must certainly be a leader. But a leader, on the other hand, doesn't actually need to be a manager. And anyone can exhibit leadership regardless of their role. Most companies assume that once you've reached a certain level in, uh, in your work, in your practice, uh, that as an individual contributor, so an IC, I'll get to that in a moment if you don't know what it means, you will of course want to move up the ladder by managing people, then teams, then entire organizations. And for some people, that career path makes sense, right? That you would want to grow from an IC into a management position. And for others, that next step isn't quite so clear. So just in ca case you're hearing this acronym IC for the first time, it's actually a popular term coined by a lot of tech companies. Uh, that means someone who is not on a management track within an organization, but instead they actually manage their own projects and tasks. So what's wonderful about this concept of IC is that you can actually be an IC for your entire career, never once taking on the role of a manager, and you can still be a leader. For example, just think about a cross-functional meeting in which you're the only person in the room who represents your craft or discipline. In this instance, you have the opportunity to be a leader, to lead. You actually don't need a whole team of direct reports to show up as a lead. So in our industry, if being an IC means designing impactful solutions largely by yourself and not actually being accountable for direct reports and their individual professional growth paths, then being a manager is about being adaptable and improving the purpose, people, process of your teams to achieve greater collective outcomes. So remember, leadership is a quality rather than a job, and we are all leaders and followers at different points in our lives. Great managers should cultivate leadership not just in themselves, but also within their teams. So while the role of the manager can be given to someone, or taken away, leadership is not something that can be bestowed, it actually must be earned. And people must want to follow you. So in fact, to be an effective leader, you should have a strong sense of who you are as a person, and be aware of your abilities to lead not only the company at large, but your peers and your employees too. And a huge part of this journey is about becoming more self-aware, identifying your strengths and weaknesses, and being able to communicate those to others around you so they can complement you accordingly. Trusting yourself can help you build your confidence, allow others to, uh, to trust you more as a result, and then make the process of decision-making much easier. You could even call this self-leadership. 
So what's wonderful about the study of leadership style, it's really blossomed over the last decade. There's a ton of resources, podcasts, books. I'm obviously going to speak to you today based on my, my experience. But there's so much out there, this is just a small sample, that cover everything from people management to feedback to leadership and working styles. Maybe one day I'll have David's book on this slide. Um, to building an emotionally intelligent office. And in the design industry, leaders also have to figure out how to navigate the subjectivity of creativity and craft. So I want to share a little bit more about my personal background and journey in order for you all to understand how these concepts apply in the real world and why I'm personally interested in this topic and why I was so happy when Hella reached out to me to come here um, and speak with you all. So I'm a Paris-born, San Francisco-based creative director and designer whose career has followed the entire dominance of the rise and dominance of an entire digital uh, design era from building mobile commerce apps for the first generation of the iPhone, to navigating how to advertise on the iPad, to optimizing content for mobile devices, and everything in between. So over the last 15 years, I've gained experience both in-house and agency side from building multidisciplinary teams at the New York Times, GQ, and Meta, all the way to launching story-driven experiences at Airbnb and Departures Magazine. Here's just a small sample of projects I've been involved with. And in October 2020, I decided to leave my full-time job at Godfrey Dadich Partners, which is a design studio headquartered in the Bay Area, to actually become my own boss. And like many creative leaders during this time, I've been on a journey to understand how to manage teams remotely, but now with the added challenge of also being an independent contractor. Now running my own small consultancy practice, I'm proud to say that I've joined the small percentage, but 0.1% of creative studios founded by women. I wish that percentage were higher. A percentage that I'm committed to changing. And in my experience, most contractors actually rarely get to be in design leadership positions, especially at a part-time capacity. But I've been able to figure out how to keep doing what I love without being full-time. I've been able to lead and build teams in a very embedded way and oversee work. So to give you a sense of my personal people management experience, since I'm going to be speaking to that today, I was about 22 or 23 when I got my first job at GQ magazine, you know, after having been an IC for, for a, a part of my, the early part of my career. Um, and I was classically trained in graphic design. I came in, but then early in my career, I was suddenly put on a management track after very shortly being in an IC role as an associate art director overseeing the magazine's marketing art department. I was hired to lead a team of people who were older than me and work under a pretty known uh, creative director at the time. Now, what happened? On my first day, my boss told me that he put in his two weeks notice. Yeah, that's how I felt too. Obviously, uh, I was really nervous. I was 22, right? I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but I, was going to just figure it out. I took it as an opportunity. I was excited for the challenge. And I just had to kind of keep doing it. I figured it out for myself, especially since I had just left a toxic environment. So my role before that, where I was in IC, um, I had a boss who uh, was kind of intense and, and didn't create a safe environment, um, which is part of the reason why I left. And she wasn't the best role model. So I realized pretty quickly how much I love this side of the job when I got the chance to do it myself. And you see, what I discovered is that there's no distinction, for me anyway, between leading people and directing the work. And my personal management philosophy relates to direct communication, leading compassionately, and advocating for optimism. So I want to position myself to teach, and more importantly, to learn from others. And my job as a creative leader has always been about finding the balance between inspiring teams to drive creative productivity and nurturing each talented soul's professional advancement. And that stuck with me for many jobs after that GQ first kind of management experience, like when I built out the creative in infrastructure for the New York Times uh, in-house branded content team called T-Brand as its founding creative director. Here's a photo of, of the team kind of growing in, in the years that I was there. Now, fast forward seven years since leaving the New York Times, and I moved to California to work in tech, 
I was at Meta for a little while, then a design studio, as I mentioned. And I find myself suddenly committed to building teams that build brands with a focus on creative culture, design, and technology. And that passion definitely transpires when I'm working with my clients and when I'm teaching at the California College of the Arts in San Francisco. So finally, as a queer design leader, I'm also come to care really deeply about using my voice and privilege to help create more inclusive communities, especially for all self-identifying women and non-binary designers. For example, as a board member of AIJ San Francisco, I also lead their program called Women in Leadership and Design as their chair. So I wanted to share a little bit about my background. Hopefully you can see why I find myself exploring this inevitable next wave of design leadership since I'm kind of living it in real time. And we're redefining, really, truly, the, the future of work. And you're all shaping this as we speak. So throughout this talk, I'll be sharing some more personal anecdotes, some research, some actionable steps. We all love some good actionable steps. Um, so that you all, everyone in this room, potential people managers and design leaders of tomorrow, can act boldly to reimagine an employee experience that, that's more purposeful, more mobile, and more individualized, and prepare you not just for 2023's like, new normal, and hopefully show up better for their people leaders so that they can then show up better for their direct reports. Like It starts at the top. Um, Thanks. You guys can all catch up with Rachel during the break yeah, if you find want. Me later. Yeah, ask questions. Good morning. Enjoy the rest of the day. Hope yeah. there's good energy. Woo, for the next talk. OK, yeah. cool. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here.